Hey everybody, this is Jeff from Rick Robotics, and I'm finally back with a new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I built my linear actuator project. My inspiration for building this actuator came from this design on Thingiverse by FastMike75. It uses a small DC motor to spin a 5 16 nut around a 5 16 thread rod and the thread rod is the piece that moves back and forth. I like this design because it uses a minimum number of parts and it seemed like it would be a good place to start. So let's take a closer look at these parts. Essentially it's these two casings that hold these three pieces sandwiched together which I have this as an example and I would hold this together and then these two nose cones go on here and then the motor goes like that. They aren't glued together so obviously because I didn't even want to move forward with this design. The first thing that I wanted to do is make this actuator a lot more substantial and I did that by thickening out both ends of the nose cone and obviously you can see quite a bit more material I've added here on the nose cone uh, both the front and the back. I also made the motor housing a little bit more sturdy by incorporating the motor groove into the cone itself so that should provide a little extra structure. I ended up having to redesign the gears because the ones provided weren't working with the tooth count on the motors that I purchased. So I went ahead and redesigned the gears themselves and thickened them up quite a bit. Well, my goal was to make this a lot more substantial and I'm pretty sure I succeeded in at least that if nothing else. So to put this all together, we're going to need two 5 16 hex nuts, two 440 3 8 inch machine screws, two radial bearings, eight 440 lock nuts, eight 440 one inch machine screws, and an eight inch piece of 5 16 threaded rod. All right, let's get into the assembly. Take a 5 16 nut and press it right into these. We'll go ahead and put these on here. And now we can proceed to put this on here. Next thing we'll do is take the motor and set that in there. So I leave a little bit loose so I can still move it around like that. Put that down there. Turn it up just a little bit. Make sure it still turns. That's good. All right, so we'll put the screws in here.
put the red with the red dot. And the last piece is taking the motor cover. And that threads through here. Just snaps right on. And there we have it. Now it's ready to be tested. So here I have my test rig. It's essentially just four buttons that go into the motor driver. It has two output channels and I think it only handles about three amps. So it outputs to two different motor channels here and it's being powered just by this buck converter that takes in 12 volts and then changes it down to five volts. That way I can run everything here and control my buttons. And I was trying to put this all into these buttons but as it turns out these uh, buttons don't solder very well and they got hot and melted so looks nice though. When I want to power it off and remove everything I can just pull the plug here, pull that pin out and pull that pin out. Power supply. There we go. Let's give it a whirl. Sadly, nothing is happening. Oh, no, I discovered that the red wire came undone. So let's just put this back on here go and try it without it. Ha! Ah, yeah. There we go. So I smashed these with the needle nose pliers <coughs> because they don't hold as well. So this is how I remedy that. All right, so I decided to upgrade my DC motor driver to the BTS 7960. I'm controlling this with an Arduino so that I can test out some end stops. And as you can see, I just have a spare motor, uh, but I can change that out. The uh, potentiometer will allow the motor to spin in either direction, as you can see here. So it's gonna go that way. I can turn it back. I built this little rig here to test the end stops. So for instance, right now it's going clockwise. So if I hit this, it'll stop. But it won't stop if I hit this because it's not gonna need to. It's only gonna be driving one direction at a time. Likewise, if I had turned it enough this direction, now I head counterclockwise, this no longer works and that one does. Neat, huh? Go ahead and plug in the powers. Powers at B. Ooh. Look at this. And stuff. <laughs> well, this is something new. The old motor driver didn't shake the actuator nearly this much, so I guess it doesn't hurt to put a little fastening hardware on either side of this. Usually it doesn't stay in here that long anyway. Well, at least we know it works. 
this motor driver is quite a lot faster. It doesn't get nearly as hot. The other one is uh, like a little Bunsen burner. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this. So you're gonna be seeing more of this in my next video and you're gonna see what I'm using it for. Until then, I really just wanted to show you guys what I've been up to lately and hopefully you will hear more from me very soon. All right, thanks for watching guys.